Oops, got my microphone. Hang on, that will be better. There we go, that's better. Say hello again to you now I've clipped that on. Welcome, welcome. Um, it's Friday, it's two o'clock. That means it's Facebook Live. Um, I'm looking down at my iPad here. I'm just gonna make sure that I can see what you can see and that I am here. It looks like I am. Excellent. Okay, let's stand that up out of my way. And I can see already that Mary is here. Hello, Mary. Thank you for joining us. Okay, I think I have bits all over my desk here. Oh, it's been absolutely manic here this morning. I mean, I've been the only person in the house, the dog and I, um, and it's all been happening, I tell you. Um, we've had work going on over the road that way. Um, over there, one house down, there's been a man up a tree. You might have seen I posted a video earlier. And they've had the wood chipper and a chainsaw down on the ground. And then they've had the guy in a tree with a chainsaw. And it has been so noisy. Um, and it's really hot here today. Um, I had a look at the garden thermometer at lunchtime, um, which is in the shade and it's saying 28. So it's really, really hot. Uh, so I needed to have the windows opened. It was so noisy. And then the window cleaner <laughs> turned up and my son's dog, who I look after in the day, cannot stand the window cleaner. I guess there's something about the fact that he comes to every single window in every single room of the house and she just goes completely mental. Um, I'd shut her in the hall where there are f the fewest windows, um, but she just barks herself completely hysterical. Um, so it was quite a relief when <laughs> he had gone. Um, while he was here, the chainsaw guys were obviously having their lunch and then no sooner had the window cleaner gone than the chainsaw guys started up again. But I think they've stopped. So I have got my windows open, um, but I've got my fan at the ready. So if everything starts up again, so it's deafening you, I will shut the windows and put the fan on. But honestly, I live in a tiny hamlet in the New Forest and it's been so noisy here today. <laughs> Okay, so Mary says hello to everyone. Kay is here, Sandy's here. So welcome, welcome, lovely to have you all. All right, so I would like to know what you've been up to. Have you done anything exciting? What are your plans for the weekend? I haven't got anything particularly planned for the weekend. Um, I've taken a couple of afternoons off this week, so I am gonna be working um, tomorrow. But other than that, I'm hoping very much to sit out in the garden and not do very much. I will be taking one of my card kits out in the garden because they are just perfect to go and craft outside. It's just one small box, everything's in there. Grab my scissors and my box and that's it. And then I can sit outside for several hours without having to move to get anything. So that's always a bonus. Um, oh, thank you, Sandy. Um, I did a session on Wednesday evening online um, for um, a load of United Kingdom demonstrators. We were doing mystery stamping, which is where uh, I tell people what materials to have to hand and then I give them a, les a list of instructions one by one and they make a card not really knowing where they're going. So <laughs> it's a bit of a challenge when you're doing it um, as a participant because you've got no kind of overall idea, but it was lots of fun and everybody made fantastic cards. Um, and there were, I think there were 70 of us on the night. So that was a real treat to craft with so many people. Um, Sandy enjoyed it, I'm very pleased. All right, so let me know what you're doing. Um, are you gonna craft along with me this afternoon? Have you got some ribbon to um, on your desk? Or are you just gonna watch? Are you doing anything else while you're watching? I always like to know that, not that I'm nosy. Uh, let me give you a few stamping up updates. Um, so the designer series paper sale is continuing. Um, I've been saying until it's the uh, it's going on until the end of July, which it is really, but it's actually going until the 2nd of August, so just into August, up until the day before the new mini catalogue launches, so you have got a couple of days of August, but um, think of it until the end of July and then you won't forget. Um, so all the designer series paper packs in the annual catalogue are in the sale with the exception of the specialty ones 
and with the exception of the colour family stacks. So the bright subtles, regals and neutrals are not included and neither are either sets of in colours and the specialty ones aren't, but there's still, I think, nine or ten sets of papers with 15% off. So if you like to stroke your paper because you can't bear to use it, then just order a pack. Order a pack at the discount and then you'll be able to use a pack and keep one to stroke. Um, the Simply Elegant Sweet Sampler can be ordered until the end of July. In a minute when I turn the camera down, I've just got it set out so you can have a quick peek. I'm not going to go through it all because I've done that already. Um, and you can always go back and have a look at one of the previous lives to see that. Um, but I am still taking orders for those. I've had quite a few come through already. The new catalogue is fabulous. Have I told you that? I probably have. Um, you will be getting a sneak peek of one ribbon from there this afternoon, but I'm not sneak peeking very much just yet. Um, however, I am busy putting together the catalogue packs um, with a few little bits and pieces that I like to send out with them. If you don't have a demonstrator who looks after you and you'd like a catalogue, let me know and I will very happily send one out to you. I'm hoping to get those in the post next week in case you're sitting at home waiting and waiting and waiting for them. Along with the catalogue, I'll also be popping in a list of my classes um, from August to September. August is exactly the same as, as it's been billed, really. Um, but September is going to be different, September onwards, because uh, we're going to be going back to face-to-face -face classes, which I'm super excited about. And I know a lot of you are. I've had loads of people say to me how wonderful it will be to meet face-to-face -face again. So I'll be sending that out. I will also be updating my website, which is sallybowman.stampinup.net um, with the classes. I haven't had a chance to do that yet, but they will all go on there as well. Um, if you're not on my general mailing list, then let me know and I can easily email you a copy of the classes. One I particularly want to highlight is what I'm calling a welcome back class. That's gonna be on Saturday, September the 4th running in Pilly, which is my local village. If you've done my classes before, it's the hall that I have always used. Um, if not, um, that's fine. Obviously, I will make sure everybody knows where it's happening. Um, it's going to be 10 till 12, two hours, and it's a social with some crafting thrown in. So there'll be coffee and cake, um, a chance for you to get together with real people face to face and also do some crafting. The crafting is going to consist of one of the kits in the catalogue, which you can order for yourself or you can get me to order for you. Obviously, if you order it yourself, make sure that you are ordering from my shop, which again is on my website, sallybowman.stampinup.net, um, because that way I know you've ordered and I can put you down for the class. And then there'll be five pounds to pay on the day, which is just a contribution for your coffee, your cake, and the payment for the haul. Um, but, but basically the payment is buying your kit. If you saw my session on kits a little while ago, you'll know that there's a really nice selection of kits and they come in at two prices, £11.25 for kits where there is no stamping and £18 for kits where you are stamping um, and that will include a stamp set, a mini ink pad and um, a, uh, a, th a thin, I don't really know what to call them, like a thin clear block. Um, so everything is in the box except a pair of scissors. So when you go onto my website, you can choose which kit you would like. Um, so uh, if you want any more information on that, let me know. But I, I thought kits are great because everything's in the box. You won't have to share the equipment. So if you're a little bit nervous about coming out and doing things, then hopefully that will minimize your nerves because no one's gonna be touching the stuff except for you. If you don't get everything finished, you can just put it all back in the box and take it home and finish. And you've got a colour instruction sheet in there, so that's very easy to do. Um, there's not really um, a lot of thinking to do design-wise. That means you're going to be able to chat and catch up with the people that you know from class uh, in the past and make some new friends. So I'm very excited about that. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, OK, Kay is working and watching. Is that work work, Kay, or craft work? Anna has arrived. Hi, Andriana. Nice to have you. Mary Jo is here. Hi there, Mary Jo. And, and Kay's doing work work. OK, well, I'm very glad that you are able to listen to a little bit of crafting, even if you're having to do work work. I hope nobody comes along and asks them. So it's a bit more than bows, but I'm sure you won't mind that. So bear with me. I'm going to cover you over, turn everything around, and I will be back with you very shortly. OK, I'll try and remember to keep talking, otherwise you will think I've gone to make a cup of tea. OK, so where are we? 
So I alter the camera stand. Then I have to change some of the settings on the camera because when I forget to do that, I'm upside down. Then I need to move the microphone and it looks like we're not having any microphone issues because people have been hearing my questions and answering them. So that is really very welcome indeed after the few weeks we have had. Thank you, Facebook, not. <laughs> okay, I'm just getting this cable out of the way. All right, so once my iPad catches up, then I will be able to tell whether I need to tweak anything, but hopefully you'll be able to see okay. Ah, here we go, right, now I can see what you can see. All right, let's just straighten that a little bit. Um, oh, I always have this, don't I? I can never work out which way to turn it to straighten things because I have to do things backwards to what I can see. And um, I am that person that has to turn the map around when I'm navigating. No, that's the wrong way. It's all, I always do it the wrong way, don't I? Right, let's try that way. See if I can get it straight this time. One day, one day I will get it right first time. Okay, have I got it right this time? That's, that's better than it was, isn't it? Okay, so this is the Simply Elegant Sweet Sampler. Four pieces of coordinating card. Uh, black, basic grey, thick, very vanilla and ordinary, very vanilla. Uh, a quarter pack of Simply Elegant paper two meters each of three different kinds of coordinating metallic trim and some matte black dots and some faceted gold um i can never remember what these are called embellishments anyway <laughs> faceted gold okay so you need to order that by july the 30th if you live close to me and you can collect it it's 11 pounds if you live further away so i need to post it to you it's 13 pounds so that just covers the cost of the postage so if you would like one of those, then just drop me an email and I will sort out all the details with you. Okay, I've just put that out of the way and I'm still working with a lead around me. Let me just try and pop that underneath something. That's better. Okay, so that's my email address in case you need it. It's handmade at home at hotmail.co.uk. Okay, so I thought first of all I will talk a little bit about ribbon generally and I'm just going to bring some ribbon in. So I'll give you some hints and tips on working with ribbon and just some kind of general information. So Stamping Up's ribbon comes on reels like this and the catalogue will tell you how much you get on a reel it's almost always either 9.1 meters, which is about 10 yards, or 4.6 meters, which is about five yards. I think five yards is, is the rough equivalent. Um, and it comes on a reel because that way you can cut off as much or as little as you like of the ribbon. I love ribbon. Um, I've got, I don't, me I meant to count how many varieties I've got. I've probably got about, I don't know, I haven't got everything in the catalogue, but I've got most of what's in the catalogue because I do love to include ribbon on my project. I think it's really pretty. Um, it's lightweight and, and it's just, it's just gorgeous. However, if you think a whole reel of ribbon in one colour is too much for you, then that's fine. Um, first of all, consider the sweet samplers. I offer one every month we, and that will have coordinating ribbon or other kinds of trim. Some of it's ribbon, some of it's twine. There's all kinds of different um, different kinds of, of ribbon and, and twine in the catalogue. So you'll get at least one and often two or three different kinds in a sweet sampler. So that might be an option for you and you'll get just one or two meters that way. Or get together with a friend and you can each order a reel or two of ribbon, different ones. And then when you receive them, you can just cut them in half and then you'll end up with, you know, if you ordered two reels, you'll end up with four different sets of trim in smaller quantities. I always think that's a really good, um, good thing to do with a friend if a reel of ribbon is too much for you. And don't forget that because these are cardboard, you can recycle your ribbon reels. Okay, so that's kind of how the ribbon comes. 
when you're using ribbon obviously you're going to need to cut it um, please try to have a dedicated pair of ribbon scissors we used to have these big scissors in the catalogue um, we don't anymore I think the reason is because they last you for decades and so <laughs> once people had bought a pair they never needed to buy another pair um, and they didn't sell as well as the smaller scissors because not everybody wanted bigger scissors so unfortunately we haven't got them anymore However, our paper snips, despite the name, are also fabulous for ribbon. So do yourself a favour, treat yourself to a pair of paper snips that you keep just for ribbon. Now I have a piece of ribbon tied around my ribbon scissors so I don't get them confused with anything else. And the reason you want to do this is because paper will slightly blunt your scissors. Even super sharp paper snips will be slightly blunted by um paper now you don't really notice it when you're cutting the paper but if you come to cut ribbon you will notice it so you want a pair that you only ever cut ribbon with or fabric if you're a dressmaker or something then you will I'm sure have a pair of fabric scissors and then hide them okay unless you live on your own hide them away otherwise you'll find that your son will use them for his you know construction things and your daughter will have them to open up makeup packaging and they'll end up somewhere in the house and they'll be ruined so hide your ribbon scissors <laughs> when you're using ribbon you want to trim off the ends once you've got it uh, tied up in a bow or a knot or what have you um, to stop the ends fraying and you want to always cut those off at a slant like that now I need something dark just to pop that on and then I can lift it up and you'll see I'm sure you know that trick but if you cut it at oops there we go Let's get it so you can see it if you cut it at a slant it is much 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 less likely to fray so always cut your ends at a slant and that's very easy to do with nice sharp ribbon scissors now there are lots and lots of different kinds of ribbon in the catalogue and if you've got a ribbon that's extremely soft like let's say the seam binding ribbon which is beautiful it's a crinkled ribbon um, it's very lightweight it feels like silk ribbon although it isn't silk it's synthetic um, once you've tied a bow or two it's fine to tie a bow with this but if you are a beginner to bow tying or you find it particularly difficult you don't want a really really lightweight ribbon like this one because it's just a little bit harder to manipulate your bow however if you do really like this ribbon then let me I'm just pulling in a bit of scrap paper then you can colour it with stamping blends and that makes it into a much stiffer ribbon so I don't know why there is something about these alcohol ink markers so it's very easy to colour your ribbon as you can see and one, that's one reason I like this white seam binding ribbon so much because I can then turn it into any colour of ribbon however once that is dry the coloured section is much much stiffer than the uncoloured section so if you really love this ribbon or if you've got some of this already try colouring it with stamping blends markers and you'll find it stiffer and it will be much easier to tie bows with likewise if you've got a very very firm ribbon that can be a little bit harder to use and I'm just looking here let me find one that's a bit firmer actually this one isn't very firm but if you've got a hessian ribbon or something like that uh, which we have had in the past or a jute ribbon those are much stiffer and they can be harder to get to do what you want um, this one is actually relatively firm but because it's got the organdy panel in the middle it's it's fine for tying bows with so I haven't really got a good one to show you but when you're looking at your stash try not to pick the very very stiff ribbons because you'll definitely find those are harder when you're manipulating ribbon on your project mini glue dots are your friends so these come they come in a box um i haven't got the box because i just i use them so much i just leave the reel on my desk but hopefully you can see if i tilt that you can see there is a little tiny glue dot here these are really small they're much smaller than you can easily find in the shops and they're absolutely fabulous for ribbon if you want to stick down your piece of ribbon you just stick the end onto a mini glue dot on the reel peel it off and the glue dot comes off on the ribbon this is the easiest way to do it because then you're not getting glue dots stuck to your fingers and then you can just stick it down and if you use liquid glue it's going to seep through your ribbon but the mini glue dots will hold it really firmly in place and you can't see them so that is fantastic 
also if you tie a bow that really won't sit nicely maybe it's um, sitting slightly crookedly you can tuck a mini glue dot underneath it and kind of bully it into submission and in that case I pick up a little glue dot on the tip of my scissors um, there we go I have no idea if you can see that hang on a minute let's bring back this again put something dark against it and hopefully you can there we go anyway pick one up on the tip of your scissors don't try and use your fingers because all you do is stick your fingers together <laughs> and then you can slide this underneath your bow um, I'm having trouble getting this on the screen there we go underneath your bow push your bow down and make it sit straight so glue dots really are your friend if you're going to be doing anything with ribbon okay so let me put my pen away as I'm going through do ask questions won't you if you've got questions about ribbon at all and I will absolutely do my best to answer them all right so I'm now going to start showing you some ideas so the first thing I'm going to do is a bow that I call a bow in the air and this is for where you want just a bow like this to stick on. Um, you don't want to tie the ribbon all the way around the card, you literally just want the bow and this bow is held on with a glue dot, you can see that's really nice and secure. Um, and I used the Pansy Petals paper, one of the Bumblebee trinkets. Um, and the stamp is from the Pansy Patch stamp set. So to tie a bow like that, um, I tie it exactly as I was taught to tie my shoelaces, except for the fact that I don't start off with a knot. So if you're tying your shoelaces, you start off with a knot like that, and then that pulls everything tight and then you can form your bow. But a bow for a card, I don't bother with the knot to start with. I just make my loop trying to keep this where you can see it and then I wrap the ribbon round my thumb which makes a little loop here and then I push this piece through like that which makes my other loop now if you're used to tying your shoes with two loops that you tie in a knot I'll be doing that in a minute and that's just as good a bow there we go and I'll do this again in a minute to show you but once I've pulled it tight I can then pull the ends to manipulate the size of my bow to whatever I want and then obviously I would just trim my ends on the diagonal so let me do that again make a loop wrap the long end over my thumb to make a loop push the ribbon through to make a second loop and then pull both loops tight so that is my what I call a bow in the air. It's not tied around anything and I would then put a glue dot on that and stick that to my project. For bunny ears, you make a bow and then you, uh, sorry, make a loop, then you make a second loop and this is why I call it bunny ears because it's like you've got two little bunny ears and then I tie those in a knot. So I cross one over the other, that makes a loop here and the one I crossed over goes through the loop and pull it tight and you just have to make sure you don't catch those ends as you pull it tight and then you can make the loops bigger or smaller exactly as before so I'll do that one again too so this is the bunny ears bow two loops cross one over the other the one that's crossed over goes towards the back and then through the hole and then just watch see that tail needs to just flip to the back there we go a very off-center bow there that's fine there we go okay so if you just want to tie a bow to stick on a card then you can either do the bow in the air technique or you can do the bunny ears bow and they will both give you um, a lovely bow when I've got you know an oddment of ribbon that's long enough to tie in a bow um, I quite often will just tie it in a bow and pop it in a jar and then I've got lots of bows all ready to use and Triana's saying she can't do the bunny ears is 
but bunny ear bows it drives her nuts yeah it's not one i normally do antriana at all and i think it's probably to do with how you learnt to tie your laces when you were young um i didn't learn the bunny ears way i learned the other way and so although i can tie them this way i never do because that just doesn't come naturally to me but other people i know when i i tie a bow like this they look at me as if to say that is the most complicated thing ever can't i just do bunny ears so <laughs> So one or the other, either or, is absolutely fine. Okay, so let me put that away. So the next thing I'm going to do is to tie um, some ribbon around a card. And I've got a card half made here, so I'm just going to finish it off with some ribbon. Actually, I don't want that one, I want this one. There we go. okay so i've got my card base and i've added a layer um, i've got one of the hand penned memories and more cards here i've cut it down just so it's a little bit smaller so it will fit on my card base more easily i didn't want to make a really large card i've stamped on it using the biggest wish stamp set and i've added just a few of the in color jewels hopefully you can see those sparkling um, so really my card is is done but I just thought it's a little bit plain be quite nice to have some ribbon around it so I've got some of this gorgeous grape sheer ribbon which I'm just going to tie around in a bow and first of all people often wonder how much ribbon to cut off if they want to tie it around their card um, you can pull it straight from the reel tie it round and then trim it off at the reel but that can be a little bit unwieldy particularly if you don't find bows easy so a kind of a rule of thumb is put the ribbon under your card and then I've got my end here and I'm going to pull it around the card and over to the opposite side and I'm going to pull it until I've got about let me think one two three four about five inches extra beyond the card so i've got it wrapped around the card here and then extending about five or six inches there and then the other end of the ribbon i'm going to do the same with i'm going to wrap it around the card and extend it again about five or six inches the other way so i've got quite a generous piece here i wouldn't normally use quite as much as this but if you do that you will have plenty of ribbon to tie a bow um, you can often tie a bow with quite a lot less than this but you find that you have to be careful with your ends otherwise they pull through the loops and then you have to start again so if you just want it to be easy wrap it all the way around and then allow about four or five inches each side even six inches okay so that's how to do that sandy likes the card thank you very much sandy all right so to tie the ribbon round i've just got the ribbon round my card and then i'm just going to tie a bow as normal but to make it a little bit easier for myself i'm going to anchor the ribbon on the back with one of my trusty mini glue dots so i'm just going to turn this over you can see the other printed side of the card because these are printed both sides you've got lots of options with them so I'm, I've just picked up a glue dot on my scissors I'm just going to plonk it down there in the middle because that's about the height I want my ribbon press down so now my ribbon is not going to come adrift off my card so that's one less thing I'm trying to hold in place all right so now because I'm actually tying the ribbon around something I do want a knot to start with so if I'm tying a bow just to go on its own um, I don't start with a knot but if I'm tying around a card I do start with a knot and I want my bow to go over to one side here so I've just tied a bow here I've pulled it tight and I've got one end going up and one end going down and then just tie your preferred method of tying a bow so you can do bunny ears or you can do the other kind which I showed you and sometimes you will find as I've got here can you see there that my bow ends are going up I mean I actually want them to go down so what I usually do is once I've tied my knot I actually turn my card upside down so Sandy lost me momentarily. Uh, the stamp set is Biggest Wish, Sandy. So all I've stamped is the words because the flower was already printed on my hand-penned Memories and More card. Okay. 
All right, so I've tied my knot, I've turned my card upside down and I'm now going to tie my bow as normal. And this is normally how I do it because I find then that my bow ends will go in the right place and I've just let go there. So let's try again. Okay, here we go. So I think of all the things you can do with ribbon, tying it round like this is probably the trickiest. So I do have an alternative for you in a second, which you might find easier. Goodness me, I'm making an absolute pig's ear of this, aren't I? Let's just, I've got a, a twisted bit of ribbon there. I'm going to stop talking and just tie it because I obviously can't tie a bow around this and talk to you at the same time. There we go. Goodness me, I made that look so much harder than it actually is. Okay, there we are. So now I can turn that back around the right way and I've got my loops coming down here. Now it's actually just a little bit loose. Can you see that ribbon? But that's okay because I'm going to bring in a glue dot yet again. Pick it up on my scissors because I'm going to tuck it underneath something. And I'm just going to tuck it down there and press the knot of that bow in place so even though my ribbon is a little bit loose here it doesn't matter because the bow is anchored in place and I anchored it in place on the back as well to start with so there we go so now I can just make sure that I'm happy with the length of everything and trim the ends off my ribbon making sure that I do those at a slant as I said before Okay, when I've got this on the card base, I may cut those just a little bit shorter. So let me just finish off the card. Marjorie's arrived. Hello, Marjorie. Don't worry that you weren't here at the beginning. You are very welcome. You'll always be able to go back later on and watch the bit that you missed. There we go. Now I've got very narrow borders on this card, but the liquid glue will let me slide this panel and get them even. There we go. So that's my card. My bow is still not sitting quite as I would like it, but that's okay because mini glue dots to the rescue. So you don't have to just keep and keep and keep retying the bows in the hope that eventually it'll go right. If you just tuck a mini glue dot underneath, you can get everything to sit exactly as you want it. In fact, this bow is really not my best bow, but it does mean I can show you how great the glue dots are because they just anchor everything where you want it. I can tweak this. There we go. So that's all looking a lot more how I want it. I am going to trim these ends a little bit. I thought I might. There we go. And actually this one needs to come sideways a bit so I can just manipulate that even with the glue dot. And let's trim that again. There we are. So don't be frightened to use glue dots. It's not a sign of failure at all. It just means you can get your ribbon to do exactly what you want it to do. There we are. So that is my card with a bow tied all the way around it. And as I say, I did make that look ever so much more difficult than it was because I just couldn't seem to get a hold of the end of the ribbon. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do a very similar card um, but I'm actually going to do the bow in a slightly different way, which is much easier if you really don't like tying bows around a card. So let me set that one aside. Let me bring in another one, which is the same, really. And this time I've got two pieces of ribbon. So I'm going to put one round the card like that and fix it on the back. So to do that, I'm going to put a glue dot on one end of the ribbon. Stick it behind, put it down just a little bit. 
I put my gems on here already to save time and I don't want to cover them over too much. There we are. And then I'm going to trim this off, leave about an inch, a couple of centimetres. And then put a glue dot on that end and stick that to the back. So this does actually save quite a lot of ribbon, particularly if you're making a few cards in one sitting. Because instead of the ribbon coming all the way round the card, I've saved that amount, which is, I don't know, four inches or so. But if you're doing several cards, that can add up to several feet of ribbon. So actually, that is very pretty on its own. And there's nothing wrong with just putting some ribbon round like that. But what you can then do is you can add a bow. Now, either you can thread your matching ribbon underneath there and tie a bow around like this. Or, of course, I could just tie that in a knot and cut those ends off. That also looks nice, but I could tie this in a bow here. Um, so I'm still having to tie a bow on the card, but because that first piece of ribbon is glued in place, it makes it all a lot easier. Or I can tie a bow in the air, either using bunny ears, if that's how you like to tie your bows, or just tying it like this. And then I can add this bow onto my card. So it's kind of fake tied round. It's not tied round at all in a bow, but it does look very much as if it is. So let's just fiddle with that bow. Okay, trim the ends. Okay, and then that bow can just go on there. This ribbon's a little bit loose. I'm just going to peel it off and tighten it. Very easy to do with that glue dot. There we go. That looks a little bit better. Okay. Like that. And if I'd actually tied a bow, this would be slightly gathered here, this ribbon. So you can also do that with one of these trusty glue dots. So again, pick up a glue dot. I'll tuck it on just under the ribbon, just where I want the ribbon to scrunch up. And then just kind of pinch it a little bit. And that glue dot will gather up and hold the ribbon. Hoping you can see that. Let me lift that up and try and show you just here. And then I can add my ribbon on top. With yet again, a glue dot or two. There we are. And I'll pop that on here and then I'll show you those two cards side by side. So you can have a longer piece of ribbon and tie it all the way around the card with the bow on the front. Or you can have a shorter piece of ribbon that you attach on the back of your front panel at each end and a second piece of ribbon where you which you tie in a bow and then attach to the front of your card so there we go now my bows are different sizes but i don't think it's very easy to tell which is which from that Okay, I don't think I've missed any questions. I'm just having a quick look. Sandy's just had her first go at bunny ears and she found it much neater. That's interesting. Okay, so two cards then with ribbon round them and a bow on the front. Okay, so I'm now going to show you another way to tie a bow on the front of something. And I'm going to bring in um, a useful piece of crafting equipment, <coughs> which is something I use when I make a roast dinner. Oops, and I'm banging around here because I've actually got a smaller one as well. So this is something you may be familiar with. This is a fork bow. So you use a bow to create, uh, you use a fork, sorry, to create your bow. 
Um, it's easier to show you on a really big fork, so I'm going to use that one, but I will tie one on this table fork in just a minute. So the bigger the bow you want, the bigger the fork you want. So if I want a bow that is this wide, then I need to use a big fork. If I want a tiny bow, then I'm just going to use a smaller fork and you can go smaller and smaller and smaller. The important thing about your fork is that you need to be able to work with an odd number of spaces between the tines, between the prongs. So if you had a fork like this, I know some carving forks just have two prongs, that's not going to work. Um, you need at least three spaces um, or you can have more but you just need to make sure that you work with an odd number of them so if I had more prongs coming out here and here I could work across five of them or five spaces I should say it's not five prongs or I could work across seven or whatever but I'm going to work across one two three spaces here so I'm going to wrap the ribbon around this as if I was tying a scarf around my neck or around someone else's neck I suppose really so I'm just going to, I've got a piece of ribbon and I'm just going to cross it over like that. Okay, and then this one that's on top, I'm going to push through that centre space. And I'm actually going to have to pick it up here. So it goes through the middle, comes up behind and back over through the centre space. So I'm working through that centre space the whole time. And then I just tie that in a single knot which I'm going to tie really tightly. Okay, and I'm just going to make sure I don't have a twist in that there. And the important thing about this is to think about where you want the ends of your bow to go before you pull it really tight. So if I want my ends to go out horizontally, then I'm going to pull them out horizontally as I tighten the bow. If I want the ends to come down, I'm going to pull them down. Okay, so let me just tighten this up. I think they've started work on the trees again. Let me know if there is too much noise for you because I have still got my window open. Okay, so this is my bow and this is actually the back of the bow. So I'm going to slide it off, turn it over and here is my bow. Now this won't pull undone like an ordinary bow does because the knot is done differently. So you just have to kind of tease it like that to undo it. I'm just going to do that again just to show you again. So put it around the fork prongs as if you were putting a scarf on somebody and make sure that you're working with an odd number of spaces. Okay so I've wrapped that round, crossed over the ends and the end that's crossing over on top goes through the middle space which is why you need an odd number behind back up in that middle space and then you use the other end to tie a knot like that and remember to pull those ends the way you want the bow the ends of the bow to go and that is my bow so that's made quite a big bow and Triana is saying her sister bought her a bow maker and she's going to try the double bow with it because she's clumsy with her fingers no problem, Antriana. I hope it works for you. Lots of people swear by their bow makers. I've had one and I just never got on with it, but I do know a lot of people that love them. So that's a fork bow making a fairly big bow with a fairly big fork. Let's make a small bow now with a small fork. I've actually got some seam binding ribbon here because it's narrow and it's soft and it will be much easier to manipulate on this much smaller space. So I've still got one, two, three spaces between my tines on the fork. So I'm going to wrap the ribbon round just like I was putting a scarf on somebody. And the one, the end that's on top is going to go through that middle space underneath the loops of ribbon. It's going to come up the back and into the space. And then I'm going to tie a knot with the other end, just a single knot and make sure that uh, as I pull it tight I have my ends going where I want them to go. Okay and do pull your knot really tightly so that bow doesn't come undone. So what was facing me is the back so I'm now going to flip it over and let me put that on a dark thing for you. I now have a very sweet 
teeny tiny bow. Let me try and show you that, hoping the camera will focus on that. Now I could tie one of those in my fingers, but it is actually a lot easier, I think, to tie that one that small around a fork. And this would obviously be um, the kind of bow that you put onto a card just as a separate bow so it's not tied round, oops, like on, on this card. So if you can't tie a bow in the air, you certainly can try tying one round a fork and see how you get on. Andriana's saying she likes that. Yeah, I do like that teeny tiny bow. I do think it's pretty, I must say. Okay. So I'm just going to drink some water because it is very warm here today. Okay, so I've got a couple of pieces of ribbon here because I'm going to show you a double bow and a triple bow. Now I've used this double bow quite a lot since I've learnt it and you've probably seen me tie it here before. So just as a reminder, this is a bow that you make by wrapping the ribbon around your fingers. So in your non-dominant hand, which for me is my left hand because I'm right-handed, so I'm going to hold the end of the ribbon with my thumb against my middle finger and I've got a bit of a tail down here. Then I'm going to open my middle and my index finger to whatever size I like, but the distance across here is going to be the distance across my bow. So my width here to here is going to be determined by this width here. I hope that makes sense. So then I've got my long end of ribbon here, and that's going to go over the back of my top finger into the middle, under the bottom finger, back into the middle, so I'm working in like a figure of eight, over the top and back underneath my middle finger. So let me wrap that again, over the top, over the bottom, or around the top, around the top again, around the bottom again. And then I'm going to take that same end I've been winding round into the space between my fingers, across all those loops of ribbon and then push it to the back like this. Now you may find that you need something to help you do that. You might find maybe your bone folder will help you push that ribbon through like that. So my ribbon after wrapping around my fingers came up here and down there and there it is. Then it's going to come behind the ribbon and then underneath itself here, like that. Okay, and then I'm going to pull that tight and slip the bow off my fingers. Okay, and you can, if that knot in the middle isn't central, you can slide it one way or another. Okay, so there is my double looped bow. So I've got two loops on each side. So I'll do that one more time. Antriana's saying that she tried this after watching me. Her latest attempt took her an age. <laughs> I think it's probably like everything, Antriana. Uh, the more you do it, the easier it gets. Probably if I didn't do it for six months, um, I would struggle as well. All right. So anchor the ribbon between your thumb and your middle finger. Open your fingers to the size you want your bow and then this ribbon is going to go in a figure of eight around your fingers so each finger has got two loops on it. So one loop on the top, one loop on the bottom, two loops on the top, two loops on the bottom and that gives me my double loop. Then it comes across the centre, pushes through to the back and comes all the way round again and then it's going to go under itself to knot it. And you are doing this bit one-handed, so it's a little bit fiddly, but if you're a crafter, you probably are used to fiddly. Pull that tight, slip it off your fingers, turn it over, and you have a beautiful double-looped bow. And this is fabulous, applied to a card like this. You know, it just looks lovely to have those extra loops on a card. So I thought, OK, I can do a double loop bow. Can I do more than two loops? And the answer is yes. So this is a sneak peek of ribbon 
this is called shimmer ribbon it's in the new catalog it's gold and it's shimmery it's absolutely beautiful i hope you can see how the light catches that it's um it's got some body to it but it's not super stiff so it's it's really nice to work with now you're going to need a longer piece with this obviously because you're going to go round your fingers a little bit more marjorie's saying it's just lovely it is all right so here goes so i'm holding the ribbon as before spreading my fingers to the size i want my bow and i'm going to go over that finger come through the middle in a figure of eight and over that finger so i've now got one loop on each finger and then i'm going to repeat it to make two loops on each finger and then now three loops on each finger and then i knot it in exactly the same way so I bring it back to the space in the middle, then I'm going to put it across and between my fingers. Let's see if I can thread this through. There we go, like that. I'm just gonna untwist that, there we are. And then I'm gonna bring it back and under that wrap I just made to finish off the knot. So I made this in gold because I thought actually this is a little bit more opulent and this will be lovely on a Christmas gift box or a Christmas card. So if I can get my fingers out, I will show you. There we go. So we've got three loops on this bow that actually needs to be pulled a bit tighter. There we go. Let me pop it on my dark mat and lift it up to show you. Hoping you can see the three loops there. And I suspect you could do four loops as well. Uh, it would work in exactly the same way. The longer your fingers are, the easier it will be, but you can actually end up with the loops overlapped on your fingers. Um, like that so instead of having them separate you can have them overlapped and it will still work so if your fingers aren't very long I don't have very long fingers you can still do that so that is a double loop bow or a triple looped bow right so now what happens about those tiny tiny little scraps of ribbon that you just can't bear to throw away so I've got one here um, have I got any others? I've trimmed some off today. Most of the others I've trimmed off so far are probably big enough to do something more useful. Well, there we go. There's another one. So these little tiny scraps, if you're anything like me, you can't bear to throw them away. So here is an idea for them. You need something with a hole punched in it. So I've made a little tag here. So if you haven't seen the... Um, tag topper punches before this is the delightful tag topper I've got a two inch wide piece of card here and I just slide it in here all the way and then punch it and that will instantly give me a pretty top to the card just like it shows on here and punch a hole so that's very quick and easy and you can use you can use two inches as the widest or you can use one and a half or one inch. I think that's right. I've got it written on here. Yeah, one and a half or one inch strips of card. And they just fit into these channels here. And that will put a fancy top on your tag and make a hole all in one go. So the delightful tag topper is fabulous. So that's what I've used here. I've stamped it with the Snowflake Wishes stamp set. That's in the annual catalogue. It's a carryover from last year. I made a little banner and I've popped some of the holiday rhinestones on as well. So I've made a little tag. And then I have my tiny scrap of ribbon and I've also got a piece of baker's twine. And all I'm going to do with my ribbon is thread it through the hole. Now, I couldn't tie a bow in that. That's too short. I could tie a knot in it. But something that I think is even prettier is if I bring a piece of twine or instead of twine, I could be using narrow ribbon. But something that is long enough to tie in a bow. So I've just put it behind the ribbon. I'm going to tie it in a knot. 
around the ribbon and I'll lift this up in a second and show you. So that is going to trap the ribbon in place. I hope you can see that it's just tied in a knot here. And then I'm just going to tie the twine in a bow because the twine is long enough. It's just the ribbon that's not long enough. There we go. And then I'm just going to pull the twine and get the bow the size I want it. Get it sitting straight. Okay, and then trim my ends. And then I'm just going to retrim the ribbon ends. And now I've used up that teensy little scrap of ribbon that was too good to throw away. And I can use this as a tag or I can um, pop it onto a card. So I did prepare a card just to make a little bit more of it. So I've got a Bermuda Bay card base here and, and Bermuda Bay is the darker ink I've used on here. A layer of pool party um, and I think this is called the Evergreen embossing folder. I've just embossed it for a bit of interest and then I'm just going to add my tag on there. So that is actually my first Christmas card made this year. I don't like to make my cards really early as I may have mentioned before um, but I just fancied I thought the ribbon was perfect for a snowflakey card. So save those little bits of ribbon sort of two and a half three inches long and you can do this with them quite easily. So I put some dimensionals on the back here and some of the strips that you get left with when you've used all the dimensionals. So I'm just going to pop that on there. There we go. And that is my card using the tiniest little scrap of ribbon. I've knocked the camera again, haven't I? Let me try and straighten that. I wonder if I can actually turn it the right way this time. What do we think? I'm waiting for my iPad to catch up. Yeah, I did turn it the right way. Good. I might have overcorrected. Is it all right? Let's see. That's okay. So Sandy's liking that idea. I'm very pleased, Sandy. I bet you've got a jar of scrap pieces of ribbon that you're going to be able to do this with. I reckon most crafters have. Okay, so I've shown you lots of things with bows of one sort or another. Um, I'm going to just move on to a couple of things with knots. So I've got some of this lovely polished pink um, ribbon, which is beautiful. It ties like a dream. I'm actually going to tie knots in it. So the first thing I'm going to do is tie a granny knot. Then I'm going to tie a reef knot. And I'm going to show you the difference if you don't know. So... I'm just tying a double knot and if you tie a double knot without thinking about it you're probably tying a granny knot okay I don't know why it's called a granny knot hoping that you can see that now there's nothing wrong with a granny knot but it doesn't sit awfully flat so I'm now going to tie a reef knot this is sometimes called a square knot um, if you have sailed, you'll know a reef knot. Um, you might know it if you've been a scout or a guide. So I've got the two ends of ribbon here and I'm going to put the right one across the left one and then put it underneath. And then that same end, which is now in my left hand, I'm going to cross over and put underneath. So it's right over left and under left over right and under and when I pull this tight I get a really neat knot I'm hoping you can see that I've got this nice smooth loop on one side if I turn it over it's a much kind of squarer knot there and it sits really nice and flat so if I put them both on here
okay so this is my first knot that's the granny knot just a double knot done any old how and this is the reef knot I'm going to tie one again and show you so Sandy was taught that in guides left over right right over left yeah absolutely it doesn't matter which one you start with as long as you swap over so right over left left over right or left over right right over left doesn't matter so I always start with my right right over left and under left end over right and under and the other thing about a reef knot is it doesn't slip so your knot will not come undone which if you're sailing is certainly something um, if you choose this knot you're doing it because you don't want your knots to come undone and it means that if you tie your ribbon round a card it won't come undone either whereas this one you can see this is kind of springing undone the other thing about a reef knot is that it's even pulled tight is very easy to undo you can just push the ends in and the knot will loosen so you can undo it when you want to but it won't just come undone so that's a really neat knot so that's how to tie a reef knot sandy's left-handed she does it the other way yeah absolutely that one will work either way so it, it doesn't matter how you work it okay something else with knots which is another idea for putting ribbon around your card so I've got another one of these hand penned memories and more cards which again I've just cut down slightly and I'm using one of the hand penned memories and more card bases and envelopes here they, they're so pretty white on the back but you've got this lovely polka dot front I've added a layer of pale papaya card but before I add it, everything to that, I'm going to add the ribbon to this card. So I've got a piece of pale papaya ribbon. It's like the, the pink one I was just using, but it's just a different colour. And I'm going to tie a single knot in this. So I'm just going to make a loop and put one end through like that, just a single knot and pull it reasonably tight but not super tight because I just want there to be some kind of shape and doming left to that knot so let me lift that up to the camera and try and show you so the bit I'm going to use for the front is here so it's nice and neat and the back you can see the crisscross where the ribbon criss crossed over to go underneath and actually form the knot and then I'm just going to lay this over my card so instead of having a bow I've just got a decorative knot so I'm going to pop that against that flower like that so now I just need to fix my ends in place so I'm going to again bring in my glue dots I'm going to put a glue dot on the back of this card lay the knot where I want it wrap one end of the ribbon round to the back and stick it to that glue dot and then I can trim that off and of course this bit I can use for a tag just as I showed you tie a little piece of baker's twine around it or another piece of ribbon and then I'm going to put another glue dot on the other side of the card on the back just to attach that other end of ribbon to like that make sure that's straight that's pretty straight trim this off again that little piece can be used and so now instead of tying a bow I've got a knot and if you wish to you can tuck a glue dot underneath that just to hold it in place I'll stick it to the card before I decide whether I need to do that I think make sure I've got my card up the right way and you can see this is actually another one of the same memories and more card that I used earlier I've just used the other side this time center that on there and I think I am going to tuck the glue dot just under that knot just to hold it in place so it doesn't slide around too much Like that there we go so that's another card this time not a bow in sight but it's just a little bit more interesting than just a piece of ribbon put across and then 
finally, I've got something else without a bow, but using some ribbon. Just one last idea for you. So again, I've got a card base. I've got another Memories and More card, which I've trimmed just a little bit. And these are so lovely for quick cards. You can see there's so much pretty detail on there. If you just want to put a card together quickly, they are perfect. And this is from the Hand Penned Pack, which is one of my favourite sweets, the Hand Penned Suite. It's so pretty. So this time I've punched two holes, just using a hole punch, in the card. They're fairly close together. I suppose there's a bit less than a quarter of an inch left in between them. You don't want them to be too close together otherwise you risk tearing the card between the holes but you don't want them too far apart either otherwise um, it just doesn't look quite in proportion. So this is where I want my ribbon decoration to be and I've got a shortish piece of ribbon. This is, let's have a look, um, five, six, it's about six or seven inches long, this piece of ribbon, so not very long. And I'm just going to thread it in and out of the holes. So I'm going from the front and I'm going to thread the ribbon into the right hand hole. And then out of the left hand hole. So it goes in from the front and then out again. And then the same end of ribbon goes into the right hand hole again and you just have to kind of hold that other one out of the way a little bit. There you go, I've cut the end of this on the slant, it just makes it a little bit easier to thread it through. If you're struggling and your, or your holes are very small you could actually even put it through a darning needle and thread it that way and I'm just fiddling with this. I've got a satin border either side of this ribbon and I'm just making sure it's not twisted. Okay and then I'm going to thread it same end out of the hole. I will undo this and do it again a little bit more fluidly so you can see. And what happens then is that you get kind of the illusion of a knot or a bow. And I'll trim the ends when I finish but I am just going to undo this and redo it to show you. Okay, so one end of the ribbon does all the in and outs every single time. So from the front it goes into the right hand hole and just pull it through. You're going to need a little end left here. Um, I really only want about an inch on that but I've left a little bit more than that. So it goes into the right hand hole, comes out of the left hand hole. Oops, I'm dropping it. Okay, into the right hand hole out of the left hand hole, into the right hand hole, pull it through and out of the left hand hole. So it's that same end every time, like that. There we go. And then just tweak things around so it all sits nicely. I think my first one was better actually, wasn't it? Um, I'm just going to push this underneath there. I think it'll sit better. Because when you put the ribbon through the right hand hole for the second time, you have to push this end out of the way I'll show you what I'm doing in a sec when I've got it started. There we go. So I'm just pulling this end underneath the ribbon. I think it'll just sit a little bit better that way. There we go. And then I'm just going to fiddle around with my loop here. If you've got a double sided ribbon and it doesn't have any fancy detail on it like this, you probably won't need to do this because it will just kind of bunch up and look pretty. But where you've got a ribbon with a border right on the top and bottom, I just want that to to look right. So just tweak a little bit. You can fiddle with how loose that centre section is and then when you've fiddled as much as you want to just trim the ends. There we go. So there is my bow that's not a bow.
So Sandy's saying that she does have a collection of short ends of ribbon now. <laughs> she didn't before, but now she's going to be keeping them all. Okay, so I'm now going to just pop that onto my card base. And that little bit of ribbon has just added some texture and a little bit of added decoration. So all I did was I punched those two holes to start with. I got my ribbon and working from the front, I put one end of the ribbon into the right hand hole from front to back, back out of the left hand hole, back into the right hand hole and back out to the front through the left hand hole and then just fiddled a little bit and trimmed everything. So there we go. That is my last idea for today. So I may have just done so many ribbon ideas that you don't know where to start. Let's see if I can put them all down for you to see. not everything actually because I can't fit it all on. Let's add some little bows down here. There's a little tiny one there. These are the fork bows coming in now. I've got my double bow here. I undid the triple one. There we go. Bows and bows and bows and bows and bows. So I talked to you a little bit about ribbons, talked about having some ribbon scissors trimming the ends of ribbon on the diagonal. I had some ideas for um, ribbon buying. If a whole reel of ribbon is too much for you, either go with the sweet samplers or get together with a friend and buy some ribbons each and then swap half with each other. Um, medium textured ribbons are easier to tie than very soft or very stiff ones, although the more ribbons you tie, the better you'll get. And then I showed you two ways to tie a bow in the air if you just want a simple bow to pop on a card like that. There's the bunny ears or there's the other way of tying a bow. We talked about tying ribbons around a card. Um, sometimes turning it upside down is easier. And then about wrapping a piece of ribbon round, tying a separate bow and attaching that, which is easier. Um, and you can't really see what you've done if you gather up that underneath strip of ribbon around a glue dot. We did some fork bows, we did a big one and we did a tiny one. So depending on the size of your fork, you can get bigger or smaller bows. We did the bow around your fingers. So this is a double bow, but you can do a triple bow and you can probably do a quadruple bow as well. We looked at using a teeny tiny scrap of ribbon on a tag with another piece of ribbon or baker's twine just to hold it in place. So you can use that really pretty scrap. Um, I showed you how to tie a reef knot and why it's better than a granny knot. And then we made a card where we just tied a single knot in a length of ribbon and attached it around a card and where I punched two holes and then just wove the ribbon in and out twice just to give you a kind of a, a piece that's woven through your card. So Andriana's saying she's made two double bows since watching. Hooray! Well done for persevering, Andriana. I'm very pleased. It's such a pretty way to tie a bow. Um, and once you've got it, I'm sure you'll use it again and again. All right, I'm just going to turn the camera back up and say goodbye to you because we have got to the end of today's session. I need to cover you over so I don't make you motion sick. <coughs> And then I just need to fiddle with a couple of settings and swap the microphone around. So I'll do that as fast as I can. Okay, nearly there. So Marjorie's picked up some ideas. I'm very pleased, Marjorie. Thank you. Okay, so I'm back, but I don't know if you can see if I'm back here. I'm not back here on my iPad. There's a really long delay today. Okay, that looks a little bit better. 
Okay, so thank you so much for joining me. Um, if you've enjoyed this, do please hit that share button because that helps me so much. It gets me seen by lots of people that might never find me otherwise, which is really helpful for me. Um, and if you hit like, then Facebook show it to more people as well. So um, like or love is, is super helpful for me. Um, I'll be back here at two o'clock next Friday and I've got a much more general topic next week. I'm just going to do some cards for summer. So uh, I will put an event up. Um, you may you can gather together the things that say summer to you it might be particular colors or particular stamp sets or papers um, and i'll have some layouts that you'll be able to use with whatever you've got to hand in your craft room have a fabulous weekend i think the weather's going to be amazing um, i hope you can get outside and enjoy some of it and i'll look forward to seeing you again soon thanks so much bye bye <laughs>